Hey, this is Josh Walroth. I'm doing a review for PC Perspective. Today, we are looking at the XFX 6800 XT Merc 319. Now, while that may be a mouth load, it's nothing compared to the size of this actual card. As we know, AMD released the 6800 XT a year and a half ago or so, and it's been a reasonable seller for the company. Uh, unfortunately, it's been really hard to get a hold of any of these cards. Now, recently, as in the past two weeks, suddenly video card prices have, have dropped off the cliff, and now they're approaching MSRP. And not only they're approaching MSRP, but you can actually get a hold of one. Unfortunately, this card was sent to us nearly a year and a half ago, but we put off reviewing it because you as consumers could hardly ever buy one. And if you could, it was double the MSRP you had. And so we kind of put it off, much to XFX's displeasure. And so finally, now that it has come around that you can actually buy these cards, we're gonna start doing a lot more reviews. And with this one, it's a really interesting one. Now, XFX has been around for a long time, 20 plus years. Uh, Pine Technologies, I believe, was, was the parent company. XFX was a partner with NVIDIA for most of its life. But back around the 8800, 9800 days, NVIDIA really pared down some of its partners, uh, two that really come to mind was one BFG was thrown to the side and subsequently shriveled up and died for many, many interesting reasons. And one of the others was FXFX. They'd previously made pretty high-end cards, well-reviewed products for NVIDIA, and they, and they were considered a close partner, but they were cut off. And so instead, they decided to go with ATI slash AMD. And since that point, they have been a strong partner of AMD. And today's product is really one of the pinnacles of their product line that they've had in quite some time. Uh, while they have had reasonable overclocking performance, you know, good cooling, uh, very, very, you know, they, they don't go by reference designs. They, they, they try to be really aggressive. This is another step up from what we have seen from them in the past. Now, I'm going to show you a few cards. This is just a regular RTX 3060, right? It's about this big. It's nothing terribly exciting. It's, it's lightweight. I mean, it, it's a low power chip comparatively, and it cools pretty well. And we hold it up to, say, a 3060 Ti higher end version from EVGA. And you can see how much bigger that puppy is from a regular card. And now I've got to get my weightlifting out because this thing, the Merc 319, it almost sounds biblical in its proportions, and it nearly is. <sighs> That's a fairly big card. This is an even bigger card. I mean, it's... <sighs> No, you do not have to adjust your screen. This thing is a monster. You could build a brick house out of this if you had millions of dollars because the cooling on this is nuts. Now, they call it the 319 because it's three fans, two of which are 100 millimeters, one is 90 millimeters. Hence, 319 Merc stands for Mercury. It's slick, it's fast. It puddles up. It's, you know, unlike this, Mercury's essentially liquid at room temperature. But we're glad that this is not. This is probably one of the largest and most well-built cards I have ever, ever experienced and worked on. Um, it has some really interesting features. You know, aesthetically, you turn it over here and you think, oh, wow, it's just a bunch of, uh, you know, shiny lettering for these. But when you turn it on, the Radeon and the 6800 XT, they turn white. The RX in between turns red. XFX turns white. Everybody's got to have RGB. However, the way they have this set up, 
when it's in a regular case, it looks awesome. And so just in terms of aesthetics, I mean, not only can you beat somebody to death with it, but it's going to stay really cool while it's happening. Uh, it is a two by eight power. It's got two bio settings, regular and rage, as you can see right here, switch it back and forth. Rage will give you 20 megahertz faster performance overall than the stock. Now the stock is a slightly overclocked and the base frequencies, the game clock is, is 2090. The boost clock, which boosts up now and then, uh, depending on workload, goes all the way up to 2340. And when again, when you enable Rage, it goes to 2110 game clock and 2360 boost clock. Memory, of course, is 512 gigabytes per second of GDDR6. So it's got plenty of oomph. I mean, it's a full 6800 XT. It doesn't have as many stream processors, obviously, as the 6900 XT. But when we start looking at overall performance, it, it performs really pretty well. Uh, of course, it has 16 gigs of memory. And when we look at the $799 price that it's going at right now, which is kind of slowly moving back down, it compares very well to, say, an RTX 3080. An RTX 3080 only has 10 gigs of memory, and those typically go for around $850 to $899 for a more basic version. Now you go up to the 12 gigs, you're looking over $900 to $1,000, depending on sales. And of course, the 3080 Ti, which is 12 gigs, is starting essentially at 1100 and up. So when we look at overall performance, this card performs very, very well against the 3080. There are some applications uh, that it loses out to, but only by a little bit. But majority, I'd say 75%, the 6800 XT does outperform the 3080. And again, you've got full 16 gigs of memory uh, for things like Far Cry 6, which requires you to have 12 gigs of memory if you're going to load up the HD textures without getting a whole bunch of swapping and lower performance just because that's happening in between your main memory and your video card. And that is what happens when you've got a 3080. Interesting, no. Um, again, I, I can't stress enough the build quality of this. I mean, it is massive. It's really heavy. At full bore, it pulls almost 500 watts of power from the socket. Now, that's not obviously by itself. I ran this on a uh, Ryzen 5 3600X system with 16 gigs of DDR4 3600 uh, and X570 based motherboard and uh, the various odds and ends. I mean, a couple of NVMe drives that you know don't pull a whole lot of power, but uh, once at full load, it is about 10 watts higher at the wall than the EVGA 3080 that I compared it against. Um, I've had a lot of fun with this card. I mean, it really is. Um, okay, let me show you. You hold it up like this, and you hold it up by the very end. This thing weighs a ton, but there's no droop. When it's it's it it doesn't sag whatsoever. We've had this in use really for the past year and a half, and it's just been nonstop. The updates uh, that that AMD has done in terms of drivers, uh, it really has improved about ten to fifteen percent overall in uh, applications that I tested when I first had this to when it's working now. So there's been a constant improvement in terms of software and. Uh, overall quality and performance is is really it's almost second to none i know I, I know that for the longest time nvidia has been you know the golden child uh for 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 driver quality but amd is is right up there now and i have had no major issues with this card or any of the other 6000 series uh in the time that i have been able to use and test them and let me tell you because of the situation that we are all in They've been kind of sitting in the test machine and 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 churning and doing cycles uh, for a long time, um, and obviously I I have not done any crypto mining with this. I don't really believe in it, and it makes me cranky. But that is another thing altogether. Uh, I tested this at the highest uh, what uh, twenty five sixty by fourteen forty, so I didn't get to full four K performance. 
But at that, I mean, at the at the 1440 uh, P, it it performed really just again the same as the 3080, if not always about five to seven percent faster, depending on the application. Uh, if 4K, this would again would be a a very good card. Uh, it has plenty of memory. 16 gigs is is enough. Uh, really, the only downside that that we can think of is in RT performance. Once you enable that in any application that supports it through usually the DirectX, you know, ray tracing, um, you'll see about half the performance of a comparable 3080. AMD has not been sitting back, uh, obviously, with their FSR and FSR 2.0. Uh, they're improving overall performance, especially when compared to NVIDIA with its DLSS and ray tracing. Uh, they're, they're showing improvement. So if you run a lot of ray trace games, you may want to look you know, on the NVIDIA side. If, if you do some ray tracing and a bunch of other stuff and high resolution and requiring that 16 gigs of memory, this is an outstanding card to have. Uh, one of the other things that I don't particularly care for, I wish there was another display port output. Instead, it's two display ports, one HDMI and one USB-C connection. So that is not the greatest thing about it, but boy, it's massive, it's cool, and it looks really neat. And so for $700 plus, I think it's a reasonable buy at this time. We do have next generation stuff coming up soon. We don't know how soon, and we don't know the ability of that. But these cards are finally available. They're finally getting close to MSRP, and they will accelerate pretty much any application you have. If you have anything under a 3070, 2070, 2800, 2080, TI, not a 2800, but 2080. So uh, it's a nice upgrade for those who are looking at it. It is a super well-built part. Uh, cooling, again, outstanding. You'll get a workout installing it, and there's no sag. You just, you just can't bend it. So really, truly, in the years that I've been doing this, um, these are very, com this is very comparable to the MSI Lightning products that are viewed way back in the day that were kind of the pinnacle of these higher end parts, except with the MSI Lightning series, they were typically much, much more expensive than what you can get a regular one for. Uh, in terms of the XFX Merc 319, you get that same kind of build. You get that extreme over-the-top cooling and it's not a whole lot more than MSRP. And so you really do get what you pay for. And uh, we'd like to thank XFX for the ability to review this. And we do give this the Editor's Choice Award. And thank you for watching. <laughs>